Hi viewers, welcome to LMS Solution. Today we are going to see about solar PV grid based EV charging station in MATLAB. So this is a simulation model we developed for solar PV grid based EV charging station. So here you will see that the different uh, sector right. So this is a power sector right. So this consists of uh, uh, PV system, EV battery system and grid system and this one was control system sector so here you, you can see that and the different control logic implemented for a solar PV system, battery, EV battery system and a, a grid a inverter system and then in center portion right so this one is a measurement uh, sector so here you can measure uh, the parameter of PV battery dc bus and grid parameter and then uh, the combination of all power okay here you can see that so the system having solar pv system solar pv array so here you can see that this is a rating of solar pv array so here we are using one parallel string and uh, uh, the string having eight panel in series so single panel power is 250 watts so totally it can generate maximum of 2000 watts at a standard test condition that mean 1000 watts can be tested in 25 degree celsius so here you will see that this is a voltage at a maximum power point for single panel and then this is a current at a maximum power point for the single panel okay so that is 0.7 volt and 8.5 amps and here you will see that variation of uh, uh, peak power for the different irradiation condition okay so this is IV PV characteristics of the consider PV panel so you can see that the PV panel operate around the 245 volt okay so when you see that right so 245 245.5 245 and then 243.3 that means that uh, the peak power voltage right so is around 242 to 246 volt okay uh, for, ch for changing irradiation as well as a change in uh, temperature condition okay so the input voltage here i am going to take that 245 volt right and then here that uh, dc bus voltage that means here you have to connect so this point known as dc bus so the dc bus will be maintained around 400 volt okay and then the input uh, that mean voltage from the pv is around 245 volt so we have to design the value of this L and C so based upon this input voltage and the output voltage and also the power rating of the PV so power rating of the PV is 2000 watts maximum we are considering ok and then we have to design that boost converter with the power rating of 2000 watts and the input rating will be 245400 ok so next thing is EV battery so here you have EV battery so EV battery rating is we are considered as 240 volt and 48 uh, dh and the initial state of charge will be 50 percentage and it will be connected to the DC bus via this bidirectional converter so this bidirectional converter will be designed based upon the that uh, input uh, voltage of the um, battery right battery is 240 volt and DC bus voltage we are considered 400 volts so based upon this rating so you have to design that mean 240 and 400 and then the maximum charging of battery here we are considered as 2000 watts so you have to design this bidirectional converter for 2000 watts and then here we have grid uh, single piece grid grid voltage is around 230 volt 50 hertz it going to be connected to the DC bus via the cell cell filter and uh, single phase converter okay and here you will see that uh, uh, control of uh, pv system so here we are using incremental conductance mppt so incremental conductance mppt is in two inputs pv voltage and current so based upon pv voltage and current it will be generated uh, uh, duty cycle okay then duty cycle can be processed via pdlm generator so pdlm generator will be generate the pulse so pedal impulse so this pedal impulse going to be control this igpt of this boost converter in order to extract the maximum power from the pv panel and also boost the voltage from 245 to 400 volt so when you click inside you, you will see that uh, uh, 
the program for a incremental conductance MPT. So this is a, a program for a incremental conductance MPT. So you have to initialize the four parameter nothing but initial duty cycle, maximum duty cycle, minimum duty cycle and a small change in duty cycle that means increasing decreasing small change in increasing decreasing duty cycle and also you have to fix the previous instant voltage power current and duty cycle and here you have to calculate the power of the PV change in voltage change in power change in current and then here you have to check the change in voltage and change in current so if change in voltage change in current are equal to zero so no need to do anything here if change in current is greater than zero then you have to decrement the duty cycle if change in current is less than uh, zero then you have to increment the duty cycle so you have, that means you have to adjust the terminal voltage of the PV panel you have to extract the maximum power from the PV array and here you are checking the incremental conductance dA by dV which is equal to minus I by V means no need to do anything in the duty cycle right otherwise you have to increment or decrement the duty cycle according with the, these conditions okay so every sample every uh, step time right sample time this duty cycle can be uh, calculated according with that condition of the incremental conductance and EPT okay so then in, uh, the output will be duty cycle then it can be process the pulse by, uh, by using this petrol generator so next process is uh, control of uh, bidirectional converter so here we are going to control the bidirectional converter by means of voltage control method because we need to maintain DC bus around 400 volt so we are going to measure the voltage of the DC bus and it going to be compared with the 400 volt so then it going to be processed via PA controller that means this is error voltage so this is going to be processed by PA controller and it going to be generate the duty cycle again it going to be processed by petroleum generator so it will be generate the pulse this pulse is going to be used for control this IGPT of this bidirectional converter in order to maintain 400 volt in the DC bus so next we need to control this inverter that means we need to control the uh, power of the grid right uh, how uh, we are going to get the power from the grid so you have to decide right so that uh, grid power can be controlled by means of this uh, inverter that means uh, power taking from the grid right that going to be controlled by means of inverter by current control method so already I told right here we, uh, we are going to charge the EV battery maximum 2000 watts so so we are going to take the reference power of the charging power of the battery will be 2000 and then you are going to measure the PV power so here you have to measure the PV power and then it uh, then you are going to be converted into current right so for example you consider the PV generating 2000 watts okay the power required for the dv battery is 2000 watts so that the power difference will be zero so we are not getting any power from the grid for charging the battery so when the power of the pv will goes to 1000 because of uh, reduction in the radiation right so the that pin power shortage for the battery charging ev battery charging is around 1000 then you have to take the power uh, 1000 watts power from the grid via this inverter that means we need to control this inverter current okay according with the, the power difference of uh, battery charging of EV battery with respect to PV power so here you will get the error power and then it will be converted into uh, peak amplitude current right so here you will get the reference current in the peak, peak amplitude manner okay so next to process here right we have to generate sine and cosine wave based upon the grid voltage so here you have to measure the grid voltage so that grid voltage is going to be processed via PLL so this is PLL okay so this PLL right so PLL will be generate uh, omiati omiati nothing but the phase angle with respect to time and it, it going to be converted to sine and cosine wave okay so then this sine and cosine wave going to be multiplied with that reference uh, a peak amplitude and then it will be generated AB signal so that AB signal here you have to convert it into DQ form by, by, by means of uh, part transmission mm -hmm. so you will here you will see that uh, uh, D and Q so this D and Q going to act as a reference current in the DQ axis okay so next here we are measuring the inverter current actual inverter current will be converted into DQ form so this DQ will be considered as actual current uh, in the DQ form so this reference dq in this axle dq going to be compared 
and it will be process via PA controller. Okay. So after con after controller, right, the output of controller in the form of uh, D and Q only. So that need to convert it into AB form by using inverse part transformation. So finally, you will get the the controlled voltage in the form of actual sinusoidal form. Then it going to be processed via PDLM generator. So this is a sinusoidal PDLM generator. The control signal from that controller, right? It going to be processed by this sinusoidal PDLM generator. So this PDLM generator will be generated PDLM impulse. So this PDLM impulse going to control this inverter based upon this reference current. Okay. So then the grid will be supply some power, uh, some power to the battery to charge right so depends upon the pv power availability so next here you will see that right the this is known as measurement section in the simulation model so here you can measure the pv voltage current and power here you can measure the dc bus voltage here you can measure the battery voltage current and power and then here you can measure the soc of the battery so here you can measure the voltage current and the power of the grid and here you can measure the PV power, EV battery power and the grid power. So this is simulation result, right? So already we simulate that result by, by, by varying the radiation. The radiation will be varying from 1000 to 500, 500 to 10 watts per meter square. So again it will be changed to 500 and then again change to 1000 watts per meter square so according with the change in irradiation so you can see the the power extraction from the pv panel right so initially it's around 2000 and then 1000 and comes to zero so again it goes to uh, 1000 and 2000 okay and here you will see that right according with the pv power right power uh, uh, from the grid will be uh, changed right see here you can say battery will be charged around uh, 1900 watts watts to 2000 watts right and then here you can see the pv power is maximum around 2000 watts so we are getting only small amount of power from the grid so when the pv power is reduced here right to 1000 then we are getting the more power from the grid so uh, that mean in order to supply the uh, constant charging power to the battery so once the pv power goes to zero so maximum around 2100 watts will be taken from the uh, grid for charging of that ev battery so according with the change in the PV power, according with the and that means depends upon the radiation condition, right? The grid will be uh, comes to uh, charge the EV battery. Okay, the EV battery always getting a continuous power supply. Okay, for charging of battery. And also here you will see that this is a variation of uh, a SOC of the battery. So SOC is keep on maintain at a constant slope level okay so here you will see that uh, this is a grid voltage grid current and the grid power so when you have to zoom here right here you will see that the, the variation of uh, grid current and the variation of uh, grid power right according according with the change in irradiation condition so here you will see the ev battery current ev battery voltage current and power so it will continuously getting power from the as well, uh, from the pv as well as grid according with the uh, irradiation condition so this is a simulation of a solar PV grid based EV charging station in the MATLAB. Thanks for watching our videos. Kindly subscribe to the channel and also click bell and give bell, uh, bell icon for notification about upcoming videos. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye.